Databases do not store passwords. Instead, they store hashes because it is more secure. But really, why is it more secure? And what are hashes? Long story short, hashing algorithms are just mathematical functions which take input of any length and convert it through the hashing algorithm to an output which is number one, unique, and number two, always the same length for that hash algorithm. I know that's a lot of words. I know that's very confusing. So here's a very simple example. Let's take MD5 as an example. MD5 is a hashing algorithm. And what we are going to do is hash a string so I can show you exactly what it does. What I'm doing here is I'm taking a really long sentence, pushing that into MD5 sum so that we get a hash. And when we do, this is the length of the hash. And as you can tell, it is very complex. But at the same time, if I do MD5 sum and I give it very simple, very short string, just one letter. If I give it that, it is a different hash. So what we have here is that it takes an arbitrary length input, converts it into a direct output of the same length, and each unique input has a unique output. So for example, as we saw earlier, I would store super secret password. If that was my actual password, the database would actually store that. And every single unique password would have its own hash. So good hashing algorithms will never give you the same hash for two different inputs. And because of this, we can now look at breach.txt. This is an example of what a leaked database with passwords could look like. So you have your username and you have a very complex looking hash. Now, step number zero. We're going to do it the easiest and the most script kitty and the most noob way possible. First, let's get the hash breach.txt. And for example, let's pick this hash right here. I don't even need to know what hash this is. What I'm going to do is go to crackstation.net. Now this is an online tool where they already have pre-computed hashes for a bunch of leaked passwords. So this hash has already been calculated. If it exists, we'll know almost instantly because hash lookups are very fast. And boom. Well, in this case, the hash actually is login, which is an extremely weak password. Why did I choose that? Maybe another one. 5B, that looks different. Let's pick that and I'll do it again. I'm not a robot. Crack that, please. And the value is password. Now, CrackStation isn't converting the hash into the password because that is mathematically impossible, almost anyways. What CrackStation is doing is they have a table of pre-computed hashes. So what they've done is they've taken a list of the most popular passwords. They've hashed it into these algorithms and they store it. And after that, whenever I give a hash, all they have to do is look for that hash on their tables. And if you didn't already know this, hash lookups are ridiculously fast, order of one. Let's freaking go. But obviously, what if CrackStation doesn't have that password? What if the password wasn't as basic? What if they didn't actually use the word list, which actually contains your common password? John the Ripper is a lovely tool which takes hashes, calculates hashes, and compares it to word lists of passwords. And if the hash was matched, then we know we get the right password. So let's store the password hash in a file first. V I hash and I'll paste it. Boom. And then I'll go John hash word list. And I'll give it my own custom word list, which is not really my own custom word list. It's more of a really common word list. Rocky.txt is older than most of the people watching this video. It is from 2000 something. And look at that. John identified that the hash we provided was a raw SHA-1 hash and at a time. It converted the passwords inside of rockyou.txt into the raw SHA-1 hashes. And when it matched the hash, it gave us the value. And in this case, it was indeed password. If you're confused as to what rockyou.txt looks like, let's just boom. It's quite simple. It's just a list of really common passwords. If your password was in this file, please reevaluate your priorities. So that's nice and simple. But really, how often are you going to find a password hash if you're not digging through database leaks and whatnot? So what I have here is something a lot more relatable. I have a zip file and when I try and unzip it, it asks me for a password and let's give it a random password. It's incorrect. So really now I don't know how to open this file because, oh wow, oh, look at that. I have forgotten my password. What you can do is you can't crack a zip file directly with John because, well, it's not exactly a hash that you can crack. It's not any ciphertext. But John does have a very helpful site tool called zip to John. And what you can do is give it the zip file. And this tool then extracts the ciphertext that was generated from the password in the zip file. And now John can crack this string that we see. So let's get zip.hash. I'll paste that, which is ridiculously long. And I'll get John to start cracking. John, oh, that was ridiculously fast. 
It looks like John's already found the hash. That was fairly simple. And let's take a look at whether I can actually unzip nothing to see here zip file, which has been password protected with the password we just found. So we'll do unzip, do that again. And it was 987654321. Voila, looks like it worked. Let's go in, see if there's any files. And there is ding dong dot. And there are some files in here. Now, for those of you that don't know what it is, do file ding dong. It is a key pass password database. Pretty much just a password vault. It's a really secure way for you to store your passwords and not forget them. And all these passwords are protected by one master password, which is the main key that's used to decrypt them. So really, if you can crack the master password for a KDBX file, you can get all the passwords inside of it. And once again, we have another helper tool, which is called key pass to John. Now that's not the file. It's called ding dong KDBX and voila. It extracts the hash or rather ciphertext from that file. And uh, we can, once again, crack this. I'll write this in a, let's call it EPAS hash. I'll chuck that in there. Now, this is an odd looking hash. So I can always do something like hash ID to identify what hash this is. But I don't know if it, this would actually recognize it. Yep, it doesn't. So instead, we're actually going to use one of my favorite tools, which is called hashcat.net. And not only that, we're going to look at example hashes on hashcat.net first and look for key pass. Yep. So there's four entries from memory. There are, sweet. And they're all mode 13400. What that means is that mode on hashcat will crack a key pass hash if you give it a key pass hash. And as you can see, all the first couple of bytes, they come up to be key pass. And once we know the mode number, all we have to do is hashcat dash M. Look at that, done. Use rocky.txt as a word list again and get cracking. Easy. Now you might be wondering why would I bring up Hashcat when it looks so similar to John the Ripper? It looks and behaves the exact same way as John the Ripper. So really what's the advantage? Well, Hashcat claims to be the world's fastest password cracker. And I'm actually inclined to believe them because unlike John the Ripper, which uses your CPU, Hashcat can leverage your GPU, which is a lot faster at making those small mathematical calculations to crack into hashes if you give it a GPU. In this case, it's not that much faster because well, oh, look at that. It cracked it. The password is actually poo bear. If I go to key pass XC and let's open a database. Let's open, where is it? Where am I? YouTube, passwords, nothing to see here. Ding dong, the KDBX. So it was poo bear one. Look at that. Now I can access all the banking passwords for Hackman. Uh, easy. That's a weak password. We know that. I can access Michael's Facebook password, which was great. And there you go. Those three tools can actually get you from zero to around 80% of what an actual hacker does on their day-to-day -day when they see encrypted files or hashes or leaked data breaches. If you want to crack passwords, the only thing you need are those three tools and a rocky.txt. But if you want to go a step beyond, then you will need to be able to build your custom word list based on context, behavioral patterns, and things you know about someone. But that is a video in and of itself.